Hello everyone and welcome back to the next in my series of reviews for the 3D app ecosystem on the Nubia Pad 3D and the LoomPad 2. I'm holding the Nubia Pad 3D in my hands right now. This is a 3D tablet that displays 3D and requires no 3D glasses to view. In today's review, we're going to be taking a look at Leia Viewer, which is the 3D model viewing app on this 3D tablet. And this is one of my favorite apps actually in the entire ecosystem for a very important reason. And that is that it is possibly the best out of anything at just demonstrating how amazing the 3D technology has gotten so far. All these other apps do some really cool things and they do them extremely well. But this app does one thing in particular that pretty much blows all the others out of the water. And I'd like to show you what it can do. But there are also a few things that it struggles to do. So let's go through all of that in the review. First, start by opening it up. Just like the other apps in the 3D Leia app ecosystem, Leia Viewer is a free app that's available the moment you get this device. And I have it on my main screen right now. So if I click on Leia Viewer, it'll open up the app. And when you open it up, you can see that I have a lot of different 3D models loaded onto this device. But the first time you open it up, it has a set of default models saved on here. So for example, if I open one of them up, one of my favorites that's on here by default, and it's one of my favorites out of any of the models I've viewed so far, is this one. It's actually an animation, so you can move it around. And if I look at the screen, then the head tracking will kick in. And now it's in 3D. And this is just a tremendously good 3D effect. It's popping about this far out out of the screen just at the default setting and I can pinch to zoom in and then zoom out and then use my fingers to just move the model around so I can view this thing in real time in 3D from any angle that I want and one of the coolest things about this is that you can move your head and it'll actually adjust the position of the model as you can see it's almost like I'm viewing a real 3D object because the angle that I'm viewing the object at changes as I move my head position around, which is one of the most amazing things about this app. The 3D effect in this app is just next level, it's phenomenal. And I never get tired of looking at models with this quality of 3D because it's just so mind blowing. They have a variety of different 3D models here. Here's another really cool one, it's a tree. It looks very beautiful in 3D because you can see all the details of the tree and the object. Right now, if I'm looking at the camera, this is not in 3D because it's not tracking my head position, but if I, the moment I direct my eyes and head back towards the display, the 3D kicks back in. Now it's in 3D, and this one also just looks incredible. It's so surreal to see stuff like this popping out of the screen but looking clear and fresh, almost physically solid the way it's here. Like if I pass my hand here, it looks like I'm passing my hand right through the object itself. And that is such a weird feeling. Like, I feel like I should be able to touch this object right here, but I can't. And it makes you feel like you almost can. This is just the basics of the app. So you can view 3D models with it, but what else can this 3D model viewer do? Well, for starters, there's a little option on the left-hand side to adjust the level of depth. So if I feel like for some reason it's got too much pop out, or I just want to reduce the level of depth a little bit, you can do that by sliding this down or sliding it up. The default setting, I would say, is about 85-90% uh, level of depth, so you can go a little bit further and make it pop out even more and also push the background further back. And by default, the background I would say is about here, so you've got about a half a foot at least behind the display. It's worth of depth to work with, and it's a really solid effect. Um, so you've got that depth slider on the left, and then the right-hand side, you also have a couple of really neat options, and it's very intuitive to use. The first one is the 3D toggle. So if I tap this, bam, goes right to 2D. And now no matter how I look at this display or move it around, I can still play with the model any way I'd like, but it stays fixed in 2D. So for some reason you feel like you just wanna check how something looks and um, not worry about the 3D effect, you can easily turn it off and then tap this Leia symbol right here to instantly reinitiate the 3D effect. And the head tracking kicks right back in the moment that the camera detects your head position. So it's super easy to switch back and forth. Next option is this up and down button here, which basically toggles animations on and off. So if we go back to the other model that I was just using, you can see that the cars are moving around. So I have it in 3D right now and it's animated. And if I want to stop the animation, I just tap this and then click none, and then the animations turn right off. So you can see now that the cars aren't moving anymore, nothing's in motion, the animation has stopped. And then if I want to restart it again, I can just click on the name of the animation, 
Sometimes there are multiple animations included with a certain model. In the case of this model, there's just one. So I'll turn it off by clicking here and I can turn it back on by clicking the name of the animation again. Here I've got a model of a dinosaur loaded up and it's in motion. It's so cool to see something that's moving like this. It looks alive and it's also popping out of the screen at the same time. So this is super cool. But just for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to stop the animation and uh, show you what these options on the bottom right are. Now, you may have noticed that the background is not the same color depending on the object that I've pulled up and looked at. And I think it is just a default setting that comes with the different models or objects, I'm not sure, but you can change the color of the background by going to this bottom right option and then clicking backgrounds and go to default, for example. It's a lighter gray or the light color has a lighter background. So this dinosaur is a darker color. And if I put a lighter color as a backdrop, you can almost appreciate the model a little bit more because it sort of blends in with the background if you have a too dark color and a dark color model together. But if you have a little bit of color contrast, then it helps the model stand out a little bit more and then you can appreciate the 3D effect even more sometimes. If you do it too much, um, it can kind of contribute to a little bit of crosstalk or certain viewing issues sometimes. So you just gotta play around with it and find out which background color looks the best. But in the case of this model, I think this color looks perfect. This is beautiful now, like it completely pops. It's just a perfect contrast between the background and the actual color of the 3D model. So there are a couple of default options for the color. I love this cloud one. This works with a lot of good models, actually. It just, I think it's the perfect balance of colors and shades to have in the background against the majority of models from what I've experienced. Now, one of the other cool things you can do is adjust the lighting. So. For certain scenes, this is really important and really nice to be able to do. If I adjust the brightness, you can see that the dinosaur's colors are becoming brighter. It's because the lighting in this 3D scene is shining on the object more brightly. And you can tell as I move it around that it's hitting the model from this angle. So there's this rotation X option where you can adjust the angle that the light is hitting the object at. And then the Y rotation. So you can do the same thing, but on the Y axis with the light. And you can see this happening, but in 3D. So it's really cool. Like it's cool to see how lighting changes in a 3D sense rather than just looking at it in 2D. So I think this is also a useful and cool thing to be able to play around with. Now, the funny thing here is that there used to be an option to adjust the different textures. So I could turn this into like a bronze color, this entire shoe, or into like a different type of like marble or stone, for example you could change the texture or even turn it into wireframe and view that all in 3D. But for some reason, um, that object seems to have gone away. It used to be listed here with light backgrounds and then there was another option. So maybe when an update has removed that for some reason, hopefully they'll bring it back or do something with it because I thought it was fun to play around with and it gave you more options to just kind of view different 3D models in 3D in unique ways. One of the things that sometimes happens when you're viewing these models is as you leave by pushing the left arrow up here, it'll bring you back to the menu list of objects that you want to look through. One of the things that happens sometimes is I click on this and go back and then it'll suddenly bring up this pop-up, all files access permission. Are you sure you want all files access permission in the settings apps? And I click continue and then it'll direct you here to like have you load a model from a certain folder, but I'm not trying to load up a model from any folder. I think this is a bit of a bug that triggers this pop-up as you're returning back to the home screen in this app after viewing certain models, but you can just hit cancel and then go back to your list of models. So that's a quick overview of some of the things that work well with this app. And there are others. I mean, I've found models of my own, like this cute little Pokemon model loads up very fast. The colors are great and it shows up in wonderful 3D. It looks perfect and it's animated and it's slightly translucent. So it's got a really cool effect. Another type that I found works really well in general is like scans. There's a lot of apps that allow you to scan on your smartphone just um, by moving around an object or taking a bunch of pictures and it stitches together kind of like a little mesh type of 3D object. And some of them look very realistic. Well, you can upload those to Sketchfab and then download them straight to this app and they're viewable in 3D like this cat. It looks pretty realistic. I mean, you can tell that there's some there's some wrinkling and unnatural stuff going on with the 3D object or 3D mesh itself. But in 3D, when you view it with the 3D effect on, it looks very realistic and it's pretty cool. This angle, this almost looks like a real cat, but in 3D. So I really think these 3D mesh objects are 
good in terms of affinity with this app and then good in terms of compatibility as well. They tend to load perfectly fine and work well. Another example is this crane. Somebody uploaded a 3D mesh of this crane object, loads quick and in 3D, it pops a lot, great coloring, looks very realistic and I can zoom way in and rotate it around and yeah, it looks really nice. Somebody even did an animated scan of themselves. So this guy's dancing and moving around and I can rotate in all different directions and it's viewable in 3D. Not hyper realistic, but it looks decent and it's compatible with this. These are the things that work well. Now let's take a look at some of the things that kind of don't work so well. There are certain file types, like when I load up this model, I found it on Sketchfab and it's animated and it looked beautiful, like wonderful colors and it looked almost cell shade, but really realistic. When I downloaded it, this is what I get. So yes, it is in 3D, but it's just a shiny silver ball. There is hardly anything retained from the original 3D model that you can view on Sketchfab. So it almost completely defeats the point of even viewing this. And it's hard to even say that it looks that cool, to be honest. I mean, I can see it's in 3D, but it's just a silver ball with the little head on top and that's it. It really is disappointing. In terms of file types, these GLB file types tend to work really well, but if they have certain textures and certain effects, those still aren't necessarily compatible with this viewer, unfortunately. Now there are certain types that just plain don't work at all from what I've seen, like this FBX file type ending just doesn't work. I mean, I've got this transformer bumblebee model moving and I'll try to stop it. There, I paused the animation. I've got it in 3D, but it's just really hard to look at. I mean, I don't even know how to describe this. It's like basically all white, a 3D object that has been stripped of all of its textures. And it's just kind of like this white 3D thing. I can barely see what's going on here. And the other problem with this is that it's like anchored here. So when I try to rotate around it, it just swings as if it's attached to a pole. It's very hard to control. These FBX ones tend to just be like white or have other issues. Like the problem with this one is that it was a scene and there was stuff going on on the inside of this. And for some reason, this model is loading at a distance that's way too far away. So I'm viewing this scene from the outside of the skybox. And if I zoom in, I can barely get inside the skybox can't even get inside it, can barely see the actual object that I wanted to see in the first place. And even if I could, because of the F FBX file type, it's just like a white model. So that's another issue that happens. Sometimes when you're working with these models that have skyboxes, they end up loading like that. Here's another example. So I want to be close to this model because it is actually pretty cool, but the distance that it loads is just way too far away to appreciate anything that I really want to see. This is a cool looking scene on Sketchfab if you look at it, but all I can do is come this far. This is the maximum like proximity that I can get to the object, which doesn't really allow me to appreciate anything. It kind of ruins the experience and defeats the purpose. There's like this ice monster that looked really cool with the textures and the ice effects on Sketchfab, but when I load it up here, it looks like it just has one metallic texture and that's it. This troll here had some beautiful textures and colors and looked amazing. And it looks like when I load it up that about 80% of that detail is gone. So it looks kind of cool, but nowhere near as cool as it did originally. I'll just pull this one up because it's another example of, I think, a 3D scan of architecture or the inside of a building that turned out great. So the compatibility with this type of stuff seems to be very good, actually. This is in 3D and I can navigate around the whole scan of this object or scene and it looks really cool. It's just a totally different feeling to view architecture or the inside of something like this in 3D compared to having it in 2D, it just feels so much more flat when you go back to 2D, it's hard to believe. So you've got all these compatibility issues and I think that's the number one problem with this app right now is that there are so many options on Sketchfab. You can search for models, download them and try to load them up here. But I would say, unfortunately, maybe only 30% of them actually work as intended and, the, and then the remaining 70% are either not even selectable in the first place, you literally can't find or load the file from this device because of the file name maybe or file type or you can load it but it's like invisible or very translucent or just white or just silver all the textures are gone hardly resemble at all the original model that you found so it's really disappointing to see all this cool potential and stuff especially with the models that work and look so cool and uh, show off the 3d effect on this so well that it just feels kind of a bit of a shame that you can't do that yet. Of course, I think this really is just a compatibility issue. 
it just requires app updates, working, having Leia go in and add texture compatibility, lighting compatibility, file type compatibility. This takes time and effort and I think over time we'll see more of this stuff happen, especially as these devices become more prominent in people's everyday lives. But for the time being, I'm not expecting to see all this added in at once and I'm not sure it's going to happen very quickly, but at least there are still a good number of models that work perfectly fine and when they do work well, the 3D effect is absolutely stunning and I would say it tops really anything else that you can experience on this tablet because there's such a tremendous amount of like depth and it floats literally off the screen. When you're looking at these 3D models, it's as if they're floating, you know, at least halfway out, if not fully out of the screen. Yeah, the effect is just so cool to see. If you want to load up a 3D file that you've downloaded, you just click the plus button on the top left and that'll bring you to this pop-up the way you normally should be able to get to it instead of having it triggered automatically when you don't intend it to happen. And then Sketchfab Explorer is another option here that allows you to jump directly to Sketchfab and then search through models once you log in and download them directly. So it's super convenient. Unfortunately, this is another issue I've been dealing with lately, which is that I often get this request failed error, unable to access Sketchfab website, which to me seems like something got kind of broken with the compatibility between this Lay of Your app and Sketchfab, and I don't know how high of a priority it is for Leo right now to fix that. For me, this has been going on for weeks now, and I'm a little bit concerned that it's not going to get resolved anytime soon. It was cool to be able to download them directly through this shortcut to Sketchfab. But thankfully, it is still easily possible to just go on to Sketchfab's website using your computer or another device, download the file, and then transfer it right over to your LoomPad 2 or NubiaPad 3D. And then you can use this button to just search for the file in internal storage. And load it right up so it's not that much of a hassle but it was nice to be able to go directly to sketchfab and download them that way this little guy is another one of my favorite models because it's just got such a tremendous amount of 3d pop-up and it's got a cute little animation too out of the ones that i found this one works beautifully and it looks beautiful so despite all the problems that i listed i am still planning on loading up and discovering more 3d models and viewing them on this because it's just fun. Showing this to people too and seeing their reactions is also really cool because it's really the best way to highlight the full potential of this 3D display. And what that tells me, the fact that you can load up a 3D model on this and view it and have it look so 3D, so realistic, and so good with so little eye strain just shows me that that should technically be possible with anything. It could be gaming, videos, movies, apps, UIs, anything this display has the power and the technology built in required to display something in incredible 3d it's just a matter of having all the other apps and things also designed to really bring out the potential that this display has so if you notice issues in viewing pictures or images or movies in 3d 99% of the time it's not really an issue with the display technology it's just the fact that the rest of the stuff hasn't caught up to it that's pretty much it for Leia viewer it really is a cool app but it does have a bunch of problems right now so so I would have to give this app a 6.5 out of 10 because there are a lot of things that just don't work there are things that used to work that don't work anymore like sketchfab or the texture changing option and the pop-up bug and then the lack of compatibility with all sorts of textures and models on Sketchfab really brings this user experience down quite a bit. But when it works, it works really well. It's not a bad app. It just doesn't feel like it's been fully developed yet and it has a lot of potential. So right now 6.5, but in the future, if these issues get fixed and we see more compatibility, that score would go way up because it would become more of a practical app for one thing. And I'll say it again, it's just at the moment, probably the most beautiful and cool way to view any one type of thing in 3D that I've ever seen. If you get a LoomPad 2 or Nubia Pad 3, definitely worth checking out. If you have any 3D models of your own, load them up, give it a try because, because it just may work. And if it does, I'm pretty sure it's gonna blow you away. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next review.